Okay. Um, it's way past six again. Um, this time I got caught up uh, working on a video project. You can see at the bottom of the screen, I'm rendering out a video in Premiere, and it is taking about a thousand years, like videos do. Uh, because I'm doing that, I probably shouldn't be streaming or doing any heavy lifting. Um, so I'm going to try to avoid running Foundry. Uh, instead, I thought this would be a great opportunity to dig into my uh, Gothic Horror campaign that I'm going to be working on for September. That's the campaign that's going to happen after Skull and Shackles. So, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna review the notes that I have, and then I'm going to kind of start writing down notes that will take things in a, a new direction, maybe. Um, if you are not aware, uh, I guess seven hours ago, uh, give or take, they decided to let everybody know that the new book is going to be a campaign... Um, source book for Ravensloft, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Van Richten, I had one of his books back in second edition for Ravenloft. Uh, he's basically, you know, the resident monster hunter, that kind of thing. Um, so we're gonna work on uh, we're gonna work on that. When this book comes out in May, we will harvest it for cool ideas and whatnot. Uh, but for the most part, I want to take this opportunity to challenge myself and instead of rewriting things that other people have done. And making it cool and complaining about like the source material while I try to make it better, blah blah blah. I figure this is an opportunity for me to do the exact thing that I want to do from the get go. So I'm gonna make my own domain of dread. I'm gonna fill it with my own dread lords. We're gonna have like uh, political interactions between the parties. We're gonna have custom races, uh, maybe custom classes. Uh, it is going to use the Giphy system uh, modifications to 5e. It's going to run 1 to 10 with compressed classes. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. So, that's what we're going to work on today while this video renders in the background. Uh, yeah. So, first things first. Uh, we're listening to some Castlevania music in the background to, I guess, get in the mood for this. Uh, normally, we're working in Foundry VTT um, and hosting on the Forge VTT, but not today, because today we don't need to go into Foundry for any of this stuff. Uh, in fact, we're going to probably just be in this here Google Doc and this here browser window all day. Well, not all day, but, you know, for the stream, while we uh, sort some stuff out. So, oh, thank you very much. So, for this, we're going to call it Gothic Horror Campaign. Uh, working title. Alright. Now, I say Gothic Horror Campaign working title because initially, I was going to do Curse of Strahd uh, and Castlevania smashed together. And I thought I was very clever. I came up with this name Borovania or something like that. Like, so Borovia and Castlevania, Borovania, it was really bad. And I liked the idea so much that I made, like, cheesy art for it and everything. Uh, oh, yeah, nice to see you. Um, let me see if I could grab that terrible art that I made. Because um, I was so hype about this idea of doing a complete remix of Curse of Strahd using Castlevania that I was like, oh, man, this is going to be incredible. I'm going to do, do some wild stuff with this. And the idea was Dracula winds up in Ravenloft and just immediately takes out Strahd. It's just like, Strahd's a bitch. Just takes Strahd out. And he starts using the powers of the mist and the demiplane to, like, reshape everything to his will. Because, you know, Castlevania Dracula is no slouch. Um, so I really liked that idea. And I was like, this is going to be fucking amazing. Uh, and I, I started to come up with all these ideas for, like, how I would hijack Curse of Strahd and use Dracula from uh, Castlevania to to mess it up. Uh, and, yeah. Um, in the end... Man, I can't even remember where this... Uh, I might have made this a while ago, actually. Let's see. Borovania? Hmm. 
It's still looking through all my images. Hold on. I might just be easier to find it on my Discord real quick. Because I was so hyped for this idea that I went and I made a channel on my Discord where I could, like, talk about it. Uh, just because I was, like, that excited about it. Yeah, there it is. Um, Barovania Curse of Dracula. Yeah, I went, I went all out. I was nerding out like crazy about this. Um, so, obviously, with the source book coming out and all these other opportunities, and a lot of people ask me if I ever run homebrew and have I considered running uh, homebrew. Hey, what's up, uh, Butler Log? This is my chance to be like, you know what? I do run homebrew. I do. It really happens sometimes. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, also, my daughter is super creative and a writer and an artist. And she's uh, also uh, a goth kid. So when she heard about this project, she's super excited. So she's going to be helping me out uh, with some of the writing and world building as well. And uh, yeah, all my games are secretly homebrew. But this time I could straight up say it's 100% homebrew. Yeah, anybody that signs up for my games thinking they're going to get a vanilla cheese pizza, um, they're, they, uh, they're going to be disappointed because I change everything to suit the group and the players and my own taste and interest. And I haven't had too many complaints yet, um, so I guess I'm doing something right. Uh, all right, so what I had before, we're going to throw all that in the trash. We're not good. We're going to try to stay away from Curse of Strahd. I haven't actually even read all of Curse of Strahd. That was part of my homework for this project. Uh, so if anybody is listening to this series as we stream it, I'm thinking of every Tuesday I'll do a stream where I work on this until, uh, until the game starts up. Um, if you ever hear me say something and you're like, that's exactly what happened in Curse of Strahd, like, immediately let me know in chat and we'll change it because we don't want to have the same shit that Curse of Strahd had. Uh, for now, there shouldn't be any spoilers for the campaign, uh, because this is going to be, like, core uh, world building. Alright, now, here's my history with Ravenloft. Uh, I've been playing since I was, like, 13 years old. I played in the original Ravenloft, I played the original Ravenloft adventure, it scared the hell out of me. I'm very, I scare very easily. I have a low fear tolerance. Scary movies, they, they scare me a lot. I can't, I can't tell myself, hey, it's just a movie, don't be scared. I get scared very easily. So the adventure itself scared the shit out of me. Um, I think I played a busty bar barmaid who got wrapped up in monster hunting or something, and she had like a crossbow. I just remember the most important thing in my character design is when I fired the crossbow, my boobs would almost fall out of my of my bodice. That was the most important part of my character. Again, I think I was 14 years old at the time. I haven't changed my character design uh, strategy much at all, actually, since then. So, anyways, um, my friends and I were nuts about Ravenloft, but other than running the uh, original Ravenloft, Castle Ravenloft adventure, none of us could ever get a group together for it. We owned all the books. Uh, we were all about, like, Lord Soth, who was just a fucking throwaway guy for Dragonlance that they added. Um, the whole backstory with Strahd and, um, his general, they were like bros, but then they fought over a woman and blah, 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 and all that shit. So, um, all that, it was great. I really liked it. Uh, there was also, I believe, and this is a long time that I'm digging deep into my brain, um, in, in the Domains of Dread, I think there was like a mummy, uh, which is kind of hype. And I think there was, like, a flesh golem who wanted everyone to be flesh golems, basically like Frankenstein. I don't know if I'm, like, projecting my own thoughts on that or if that really happened. I may want to revisit some, like, lore videos for Ravenloft so I don't inadvertently, like, steal Ravenloft ideas for my own campaign. Anyways, um, one of the things that people ask me is, how is it going to go down? All right, like, what's going to happen here? So... Uh, let's go ahead and get all those things knocked out. So first and foremost, the game is going to be in, uh, September of 2021. Uh, for young people, that might seem really far away, but for old people like me, that's basically two, two weeks from now. September 2021 is like two weeks from now. Uh, so I really don't have a lot of time to prepare for this. Uh, 
the reason I'm setting it all the way out at September is that more than likely it'll start late anyways. And that means we'll start in October, which is spooky month. So it seems like a pretty good time to start. Uh, also, it gives me plenty of time to end Skull and Shackles. Now, my projections for Skull and Shackles continue to be wrong. Um, my modest calculations were that we would finish at the end of April. Um, we are about to enter March, so that is, in fact, a lie. We will definitely not finish in April. Uh, I think June, July is when we're probably going to be uh, finished with Skull and Shackles. So... Um, what does that mean? Does that mean the game will be on Thursdays? Uh, more than likely, yes. It will probably be, it will probably take the time slot. Uh, it will be 8 to 12 Eastern, uh, instead of 8 to 11 Eastern. Uh, because I think four hour sessions are the best. All right, um, I will cap uh, the player count at five. Because any more than that, it's going to be hard to um, integrate everybody into the story evenly and all that jazz. All right, so I'm going to be pretty strict about it, just like I've, I was with Mythic. So first and foremost, we're going to be using Giphy System. Uh, for, for so much, for so much. So we're going to be using the Giphy systems and in the Giphy systems, hold on, there we go. We're going to use class compendium. I feel that class compendium is one of the greatest things that Giphy has made, even more so than his monster builder. Uh, because honestly, I've run and played in a lot of, 5e games that ran 1 to 20 and the game just isn't the same after like level 11 or 12 like it's a different kind of game and it's not that that type of game isn't fun but it's like a different game and I'm already committed to running two uh, Odyssey of the Dragon Lords games all the way to 20 and we're currently in high level play I consider anything above level 10 high level play in 5e. We're in level, you know, high level play for Skull and Shackles. I just don't want to do another campaign that goes to high level play. I don't want to have to be smart enough to deal with high level magic again. So in this particular game, we are going to use Class Compendium. Uh, that means it is going to go level 1 to 10. Uh, the benefit here is that it's going to have compressed classes, uh, which means you're going to get your capstone at level 10. So that level 20 capstone that everybody's always like got a hard on for. Oh, my capstone ability. Ah, uh, I can't multi-class or I'll, I won't get my capstone ability. Nobody ever gets their fucking capstone ability. And if you get your capstone ability, you get to use it for like one session. And then you're done. Um, so, yeah. Exactly. A and also, they're kind of trash. So you get your capstone at level 10. That's cool. Uh, also, I like that the compressed classes, would you do the multi-class Giphy to 20? I would not. I'm going to actually time the progression of this around going levels 1 to 10. So this will mean it is going to be another milestone game. Uh, it's going to be built around 10 levels of progression. Uh, what this also means, though, is that, uh, races will gain, a, a power with levels. Uh, so, basically, they're gonna have, uh, level 1 abilities. And then, I was thinking I would go level, uh, 4 abilities and 8 abilities, but I mean, 4 is already kind of a big deal level anyways, so maybe we'll do, like, level 3 and level 7, and then level 10. Something like that. Or maybe level 9 racial abilities. I don't know. We'll, we're gonna work on that, but I want... I want actual members of different species to get stronger as they level up. I want their I want their race slash species slash culture to actually have a mechanical impact on play other than initially at the beginning of the game. Um, I think it'll be kind of cool. And yeah, 
this also means if we're using class compendium that we won't be doing any uh, multi-classing. So... Now, I would like to explore um, custom subs. Uh, obviously, some sort of monster hunter would be kind of cool. Uh, something related to lycanthropy would be cool. Um, but for the most part, things like lycanthropy and monster hunter could be wrapped up in racial traits and things like that. So, might not need to might, might not need to worry about that. All right, so we've got class compendium, we've got custom subs. Uh, I, I'll be honest, uh, I've been playing with it and I've been running with it, and I love active initiative, and I'm gonna keep active initiative for this. So that may be a turnoff for some people, uh, but we're gonna keep uh, active initiative. Uh, ooh, oath of the hunt that actually sounds dope. Oath of the uh, hunt, very cool. Uh, so I want to keep active initiative. We're going to keep Giphy Monsters. Um, I, I'm enjoying the hell out of Giphy Monsters. It's it's like I get the best of both worlds. I get the best of 5th edition and 4th edition with uh, these Giphy Monsters. Uh, I used a Giphy Monster last night in my non-Giphy game. I just disguised him as a legendary monster. And it was, uh, it was lovely. It was lovely. Um, it's tempting to say no feats because, uh, the races will provide that sort of stuff. Um, so I'm unsure about feats. I would very much prefer, uh, to focus on racials and also focus on boons. I will be honest, I really don't like the piety system from uh, Theros. I've been trying to use the piety system in my mythic game, and it just feels like more bookkeeping on top of more bookkeeping on top of more bookkeeping on top of more bookkeeping. Um, honestly, the way everybody's role-playing, you know if they're like in their god's favor or not. It seems really stupid to have to track that shit you know, mechanically, when we all know who is who is doing good by their god and who is not doing good by their god. Um, so boons are uh, basically like special powers and abilities outside the normal rules. Um, they're in the Dungeon Master's Guide for 5th Edition. I, I don't know the page, obviously, because I don't use physical books, but um, I'm definitely... I'm definitely a fan of boons. Sometimes boons last for a little while. Sometimes they last for a long time. Sometimes they last forever. Uh, it really depends what kind of campaign you're running. Uh, if you're running a high-powered game and everybody has already maxed out their three attunement slots, that's when you start handing out boons. Uh, boons basically provide the function of magical items, but they're tied to a specific character. And more often than not, they are themed around the act that you did to receive them, the person or entity that gave them to you, or they're custom tailored to the person that received them. Uh, so boons are a fantastic way to reward people um, that is not more magic items, essentially. All right, uh, let's see. So we've got feats. Uh, we will be using a crafting system. Uh, but we will also, uh, and this will just be, uh, Giphy and Crash Gem, uh, systems. And then for travel, I'm actually going to just turn travel into abstract, uh, skill challenges. I want the focus to be on, on set locations within the world and I don't want to waste time with random encounters out in the field. I know it's a deadly and dangerous world, uh, but how we're going to deal with it is you're, you, plot a, you plot a course uh, from this location on the map to that location on the map and you see the places that you have to stop in between and we roll out some skill challenges for that and based on how it goes, you arrive at your destination uh, low on resources, good on resources, or maybe flush on resources. So, uh, in Adventures League for Curse of Strahd, they used a mechanic where if the character dies, they return to life while gaining a double-edged gothic-themed blessing curse. The idea is that not even death is an escape. That sounds fantastic. I really like that. Uh, please, yeah, please send that over. Uh, let's see. 
So, on that note, I do want this campaign to be very similar to Odyssey in that I want it to be character-driven. Uh, uh, so, I want there to be cheat death mechanics. Uh, either Fate, uh, or Dread, uh, or um, Deals, you know, made with entities. Uh, and... I also want to have epic paths, but these epic paths will instead be called, uh, I think I was going to call them Dread Callings? Dark Callings? I'm not 100% sure uh, what kind of spoopy, spoopy thing I want to call it here. Uh, let's see. Dark Callings. There we go. Now, unlike uh, Odyssey the Dragon Lord, I don't want to heavily write these out ahead of time. I kind of want to see what my player roster is, and then I want to go back through the adventure, and I want to incorporate a dark calling for each person's character in a manner that would fit with the adventure that we have written. So I don't want to, like, pigeonhole people into having to play a certain way, because inevitably... With Odyssey, you end up changing the epic paths to match the characters anyways. So I'd just be kidding myself if I was like, ah, yeah, I know what everything's going to be ahead of time. Uh, succeeded at cost will, of course, be there. Uh, yeah, and succeed is, uh, like a boss is, 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 you know, that's the lifestyle of always succeeding at a cost. Um, let's see. So all this seems pretty good. So that's the basics of what I'm doing, is I'm trying to move away from uh, loose, you could play whatever you want, bring it in, we'll make it We'll make it happen. Uh, crit at a cost, no. No, no, no. Da, 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 da. Um, but if we're able to cheat death constantly, and we want this to be a little bit gory, like gallons of blood gory, we may explore other critical hit systems that add a little bit more to it. Though, honestly, critical hits are pretty nasty with the max crit dice, so. All right, I don't even have a name for the world uh, at all, but from what I understand, the world is going to be a demiplane. So let's start rocking out some of that information here. So it is going to be a demiplane. Uh, it is going to be a dread domain. Okay, um, it is going to be relatively small, uh, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Uh, it is going to be controlled by warring factions, each led by a dread lord. Okay, um, they are vying for uh, actual dread. Uh, which is to say, the fears uh, of the people. I guess it's like Monsters Incorporated in that uh, in that regard. Uh, let's see, the fears and belief of the people. There we go. Ah, uh, yeah, it's totally Monster Sync. Yep. Um, so these factions are kind of vying for uh, the fears and belief of the people in the. In Dungeons and Dragons cosmology, belief powers everything. Everything is powered by by belief. Even even arcane magic, uh, if we're being honest, it's all powered by belief. So in a demi plane like this, the the plane, the very nature of demi planes, according to the lore of D and D, is that they will take on the traits of the most powerful personalities and forces of will that dwell within them. So. Each area of this demiplane is going to be shaped by the Dread Lord who currently controls that region of the world. And they're constantly trying to spread into each other's area. <laughs> yeah, I'll kid up a thousand adventurers that will keep this demiplane alive. Totally. Um, so, obviously these these powerful beings, they, they, don't want, they don't want too many, like, brown nosing like sycophants or whatever right they need they need honest salt of the earth people to be afraid of them to believe in them to uh to honor them um having a bunch of lackeys that doesn't give you nearly the juice that you need of the other things um 
So that has been suggested a couple times that each faction leader is a classic souped up monster like Frankenstein, Dracula, Mummy, etc. That is exactly how the Domains of Dread are done in old school Ravenloft. I hope that the new book that comes out in May uh, brings all that shit back up because there was some really cool stuff in the lore. Um, yes, and these demi planes are also prisons for the Dreadlords, uh, generally constructed to be an absolutely miserable time for the Dreadlord with the citizens being collateral damage, right? So in a way, it's sort of a it's sort of a bad luck purgatory situation uh, for everyone else that's there. Um, you just sort of you just sort of wander in and you can't get out kind of deal. Um, that being said, the argument for uh, party diversity and stuff is that anyone can wander into the demi plane of dread, and therefore you could have your Loxodon gunslinger. Uh, and your your tabaxi um, bard and all these other things that I'm trying to avoid this time around. Um, so in that way, in that way, I want to make sure that the theme is still kept relatively strict for this. So while while it is possible for um, as a demi plane existing in the the 5e multiverse for things to get pulled in, I'm gonna try to keep things very very simple. And very curated as far as like what exists in the world. Oh hey, what's up? Uh yeah, critting at a cost, I feel like you would need to be damaging yourself uh at the same time. Like maybe you got like a 19 and you wanted to crit into a 20. It's like cool, are you willing to also take the crit damage kind of deal? That would be pretty nuts. Alright, so. In that way, there's going to be uh, custom uh, races, cultures, uh, and species in the world. Uh, so the ones that I currently have worked out are, of course, humans, because you need to have that ground zero, salt of the earth, relatable thing. Uh, within the humans, uh, there are going to be three cultures of humans. There's going to be embraced darkness humans. Uh, there's going to be uh, Fight the Darkness. And then there's going to be... I wish I wasn't in the darkness. Yeah. So, uh, the flavor behind it, of course, is these people are all in for evil. And uh, the power it brings... Uh, these people are, uh, it is our divine right and duty to cleanse these lands of evil. Uh, and then finally, I wish I wasn't in the darkness, humans are like, question of the day, would you yay or nay to Cthulhu? Um, not, in, not in this campaign, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have Cthulhu. Um... I don't know if I would go with an Eldritch Horror-based, um, like, Dreadlord or not. Maybe. But I think I'd try to focus on more traditional uh, Gothic Horror. Uh, so, I wish I was in the darkness is going to just be... Uh, these people just want to survive. Uh, keep their heads down. And move forward. All right. Uh, correct. Like, the Embrace the Darkness people are useful, but not nearly as useful as some of these other, uh, these other people are going to be. So, then there's going to be, uh, Fae. Uh, and then amongst the Fae, there's going to be Shadow Fae, which, I mean, honestly, that's just elves. Um... Everybody wants elves. You gotta have elves. So we're gonna have a sort of elven class. So it might be like an elf changeling hybrid uh, kind of deal. Like a shadow elf changeling hybrid. Um, and then my daughter said that we should probably try to have... Yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll reskin some Shadow Archai for, for sure. Uh, maybe less punk rock, though. A little bit less punk rock. Industrial goth elf uh, is too too much industrial goth elf for me. So, um, we thought that we needed to have a uh, a short race, a small race. Um, but 
let me just let me just throw it out there. You you throw a halfling into anything, and it just gets funnier. It doesn't get scarier. It just gets funnier. Even if the halfling is trying to be scary, it's just going to get funnier. And any campaign I run is already going to be fighting hard not to be funny. And we don't need none of them, you know, none of them halflings and gnomes running around making shit funny. Uh, dwarves are cool at all, but nobody really thinks of dwarves as a small race. And dwarves are very, like, dour and tough. And I just don't... I, I have other plans for something uh, that's more... Mm, earthen than dwarves. So I'm kind of moving away from that. But we did finally settle on a good small race, and that is actually going to be red caps. Uh, and if you know your lore, red caps are fey that are small, but very, very strong and very, very murderous. Um, and basically, red caps have a symbiotic hat made of flesh that they have to feed blood or it will drink their blood and kill them. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So the idea here is I want these, I want these to be smalls, uh, but, but scary, right? And to me, there is no scarier small, um, than a red cap. Um, well, okay, I can think of a few others, but they wouldn't be appropriate for player characters. So I like the idea of the red caps because I feel like I feel like if they were put in the right situation, they would make, like, very cool, playable uh, race as far as, like, mercenaries and um, guards and uh, hitmen and toughs, things like that. They would be they would be a very cool part of the campaign um, and almost kind of fit like a dwarf vibe, right? Because they're tough and violent and things like that, like the worst parts of a dwarf, of course, not the best parts of a dwarf. Um, greedy, violent, tough, small. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of digging that. I'm kind of digging that idea. So those are like the fey creatures that I'm thinking about. Uh, and then we've got the, the whole, uh, lichen situation. And Ravenloft was bananas with the amount of lycanthropes there were. Uh, every animal you could think of, I think there was even a were platypus. They fucking had it all. Um... We're not going to worry about all of that. Uh, we're going to have werewolves. And we're going to have were rats, And we're going to call it a day. That's it. Done. Um, obviously, werewolves. Uh, how about Jawas in the dark without cloaks? Hey, what's up, dude? Good to see you. Uh, yeah, I feel like the red caps will definitely fill the role of I want to be small, but still maintain the theme of gothic horror better than any of the existing small races would. Uh, yeah, I mean, the where platypus stats were off the hook. I mean, platypus have poisonous claws. Uh, they've got, like, some of the best qualities of a bird and a mammal. I mean, it's no joke. It's no joke. But, again, it doesn't really fit this campaign. Um, so werewolves, uh, I mean like you would expect and then were rats uh like werewolves but no honor clever and sneaky there we go uh these will by level 10 be fully functional lycanthropes so they will uh so were spiders did get suggested uh, where spiders did get suggested. I kind of liked it. I'm worried about if a race is too monstrous and too scary, how do you, how do you scare them? Do you know what I'm saying? If part of the game is to run a scary game, to run a horror game, to try to make scary situations, um, like how believable is it to make people, uh, that are horrifying like, by design, scared of something, you know? Like, I'm, I'm trying to... I know that the players will be scared, but... Uh, where Raven was 100% a thing in Ravenloft. That was a real that was a real thing uh, in Ravenloft. Uh, I think Where Spider was also a thing. Honestly, if you could think of a Where creature, it was in 2nd edition Ravenloft. It, it, was, it was stupid how many uh, lycanthropes they had. Uh, now, there is going to be... There are going to be Batkin... Uh, so, Batkin are basically, like, the resident, like, I guess, pseudo-furries, um, 
I guess I guess think like Man Bat from like Batman Beyond kind of deal, or not Batman Beyond, just just Batman in general. Um, so I was contemplating having like you know normal Batkin, but also having uh, Stonehearted uh, Batkin, which would basically just be Disney's gargoyles, um, which they kind of did in uh, Wow Shadowlands. I don't know if I want to, you know, if I want to go that route, but I think it would be kind of hype uh, to do it. Uh, you basically have abilities that are focused around um, stone and earth and, and that kind of thing. Um, whereas a normal Batkin would be, uh, you know, more traditional uh, bat abilities. So, I don't know. I think it'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Um, I like the Batkin, uh, I like the Batkin quite a bit. So, now, the Batkin, it's worth noting, uh, they will have Glide, uh, at level 1, but not full flight. Uh, so they'll have Glide like a Simic hybrid. So, let's see, Simic, uh, hybrid, there we go. Yeah, so these guys have a... Uh, Manta Glide, you have ray-like fins that you can use as wings to slow your fall, allow you, uh, allow you to glide. When you fall and aren't incapacitated, you can subtract about 100 feet from the fall when calculating fall damage. You can move up 2 feet horizontally for every foot that you descend. So, I mean, for all intents and purposes, it's, it's kind of cool, but, um, it's not gonna be, you know, it's not gonna be great. Uh, let's see. Clear the formatting on that. Uh, but, they will, you know... Uh, learn full flight, uh, I don't know, by level 5-ish. Yeah. Um, and then non-penalized flight by level 10. And by that, I mean most of the races that can fly, they can't wear, like, heavy armor and shit while they're flying. They can't carry somebody else with them, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, I think it says you could subtract up to a uh, 100 feet from the fall, and then you'll still take 400 feet of fall damage. So, um, I think eventually it's just your, your little flappy arms give out and you just, and you just die. So, um, we of course need to have half vampires, so we're going to have dampiers. Uh, and I don't know if I'm going to bother with subclasses of these. It might just be, you know, literally half vampires. All right. I think that is all of the races that I wanted to do. Yeah. So that'll be it. That's, that's the races that they'll be, period. There'll be nothing else. You have to choose one of these races and then a class, and you can't multi-class, and then you move on from there, kind of thing. So, that's what I have lined up for for the races. Uh, let me close this out real quick. Um, overall, I like it. I like it quite a bit. Um, now, as far as, like, Dread Lords go... I mean, technically, there's a, a variant human in that there's three different humans. Uh, in Forgotten Realms, I think there's like 13 different flavors of human being in the Sword Coast Adventures guide. So this isn't like, you know, this isn't new thinking uh, to have sub-races of humans. Uh, it's just most most uh, settings don't ever seem to bother with that, which is kind of weird. Alright, uh, let's see. So then we've got uh, Dread Lords. So since the world is defined by these Dread Lords, obviously the Dread Lords are important. So, ideas that I had kicking around for Dread Lords that I will have to cross-reference with the history of Ravenloft to make sure I'm not stealing anything in particular. Obviously, we need a vampire. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Uh, vampire, if it's a boy vampire... Uh, let's see... If it's a boy vampire, we're going to immediately be dealing with Strahd, question mark, Dracula, question mark, right? Like, if you have yet another boy vampire, 
I mean, there's so many boy vampire bad guys. You know what I mean? So many boy vampire bad guys. Um, do you just want to do a girl vampire, right? And then, you know, you're... Oh, yeah, Lestat, sure. Uh, you do a girl vampire. Mm, now you're dealing with, like, is this Queen of the Damned? Like, what's the situation here? Uh, she's going to be, you know, like... Less cliches if we do a girl uh, vampire than if we do a boy vampire. Um, so what I'm thinking is, in the lore of D&D, &D, uh, the succubi, okay, uh, actually created the vampires. That's right. Um, so the species of demon, known as succubi, uh, also Incubi, um, this interchangeable, they are the ones that created vampires. So if you really want a big boss monster vampire, you would just have a legit, yeah, you would have, I mean, I mean, we could make it Lilith. I'm just saying we could, we could make it the, you know, could make it a really badass succubi. So I kind of like the idea of going with a succubus, because one, they are gender fluid, so it's neither a boy nor a girl. It actually is, you know, whatever it wants to be. Um, so it's one of those things, since it's a fluid shape changer, uh, it would be able to really mess with the party and mess with its rivals and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, and I don't think there's been a Succubus Dreadlord yet, either. And I feel that uh, a Succubus... Um, is the kind of demon who would fuck up or fuck over the wrong person or or just in general wind up trapped in a demiplane. Uh, in fact, uh, there happened to be a, a succubus noble from my uh, Ghost of Saltmarsh campaign who was banished. Maybe she got banished to, to, to a demiplane and then, bam, we've got some, like, tie-ins to, like, existing um, game universe. I thought that'd be kind of cool. Um, yeah, so I like that idea uh, very, very much. I like that idea very, very, very much. So I'm, I'm leaning very heavily towards the vampire faction actually being run by a succubus. And, of course, they'll have vampires and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, so we'll put... Salt Marsh. Um, all right. So another one that I thought of, and I'm worried that it already exists, is uh, is basically Frankenstein. Okay. Um, the idea here, I had a couple of ideas kicking around for this. One is um, uh, Golem Mancer, uh, which in this setting we're going to call them Doll Mages, because that makes it sound super creepy. Um, so Golem Mancer, aka Doll Mages. Um, so idea here is built himself a body uh, to live forever. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, or, or um, his creation uh, was so woke uh, it killed him. And took over his research and projects. So, I'm not sure. I kind of like both. I kind of like both. Uh, so, mm, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. The vampires are going to have, uh, going back to this, um, you know, min minions here. Uh, They're obviously going to have uh, vampires, thralls. Uh, they're going to have Batkin. And they're going to have uh, Dampiers. You know, uh, if we're if we're grabbing stuff off of this off of this list up here. So the thing about this uh, Frankenstein dude. Uh, yeah, he keeps improving himself for putting his brain in different bodies. Ultron style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm unsure if I want it to be like brain in a jar. Or if I want it to be like his creation, I kind of lean in towards brain in a jar for Frankenstein. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I really like that idea. Um, and basically, 
Uh, yeah, so we'll do brain in a jar. Yeah, I really like the idea of brain in a jar. And for his hubris, essentially, of constantly cheating death and constantly spitting in the face of the gods by, like, creating his own shit and, you know, his own, you know, making things his own way. Um, yeah, he, uh, he basically was banished to this demiplane of dread uh, because he was he was considered an abomination by by all all the gods, essentially. Right, exactly. Um, all right, so banished to dread domain uh, because of his hubris and um, opposition to the natural order of things. So he's like worse. He's worse than a lich um, because he won't even. He won't even die. Like, a lich will at least die to gain its power, but this guy is using science to just continuously um, upgrade himself and, and, and that sort of thing. Now, a great suggestion was made. Are you going to have a playable race that is a golem kin or essentially someone who um, practices that kind of shit? And I... I don't want to make a race for that. I want to make a. I want to make a class for that. So for doll, I want to make doll mages essentially. So I don't know if I want that to be a flavor of warlock, uh, sorcerer, or wizard, but I want it to be one of those. So let's see. Uh yeah, yeah. I mean, this is just a. This is a flesh. This is a flesh molder, um, basically. If you are familiar with Descent and that whole setting um, from Descent Journeys in the Dark, this is this is a flesh molder. Uh, these are people that um, abuse like physical forms to to get what they want and to gain powers and things like that. Um, so I like the idea of this as as a as a lord very much, um, and I want to have uh, a hag. I want to have a really powerful hag. Um, so, let's see. Why is why are these so far in? Hold on. Uh, there we go. Same with this. What, what are you doing? Eh. Eh. All right. Whatever. Um. So with the hag. Basically, a flavor of artificer. A no, 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 no. Um, I had considered that as well, though. That I was like, doll mage for uh, artificer would reskin into a doll mage really well, but we'd have to make a giphy version. Um, yeah, I can't recall there being a hag. I know there were a lot of hags. Um, in in Ravenloft and in the domains of dread, but I didn't think that there was a hag who was an actual dread lord. So. Uh, I'm very much interested in that. Um, let's see. I could think about the Zimiski ability Visilitude to mold living or dead flesh. Yeah, You could have him be a large sized flesh golem and take on bits of the personalities of the people he uses to piece himself together. Uh, like the brush and handle story where you swap out parts many times. Uh, is it still the same brush? Nothing is left of his personality original body except for his rotten soul. Oh, for sure, for sure. This guy's going to be incredibly unstable, and in a way, um, he's going to kind of have like a Legion vibe, you know, because he is so many things cobbled together. Oh, okay. It's been a while since I did Vampire the Masquerade. It's been a while. Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Normally, the Dreadlords were humanoids who became super evil. Um, Vecna was actually a Dreadlord for a while. Vecna actually escaped from the Domains of Dread because Vecna is a badass. Um, so, yeah. Like, Lich is kind of already covered. Uh, but Hag, as far as I know, hasn't. Uh, there was an Elder Brain Dark Lord. Yeah, that is true. That is true. And I could have sworn that there was a Frankenstein one, too. But I'm going to go ahead and, like, I'm sure with the announcement of this campaign book, all of the lore video guys and girls are going to be going bananas, cranking out Ravenloft lore. So I'll listen to that, and I'll adjust my notes accordingly. So um, for the hag, 
Um, basically, uh, classic super hag. Uh, evil, evil uh, winter fay, for sure. Um, working for her uh, will be, I don't know, uh, Hagborn and um, Faye Shadow and uh, Faye Redcaps. Uh, there was a nice spin on it. That's different enough to me. Yeah, I feel like we're taking the the Elder Brain and the Frankenstein, and we're kind of making it into something something new. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm digging that. Uh, let's see. I wonder. I wonder if the werewolves and the were rats would be down for that shit or not. I I almost wonder if the werewolves and the were rats would kind of like gravitate towards the Frankenstein dude because he's about change and they're about change. I don't know. Maybe like he teaches them ways to use their lycanthropy to like morph into like more fucked up stuff than just like a wolf and a rat. Hmm. Maybe. Uh, so minions, it's going to be a whole lot of casters, uh, juicers, and lichens. Hmm. Hmm. I dig it. All right. So with the hags, they're going to have the fey for the most part. And uh, I think that's about it. They've got the fey and then people that are fey adjacent. So... Uh, Fey adjacent, uh, and then of course fucked up druids. Uh, can't forget those guys. Um, all right, so there's really, yeah, there's really. Hey, what's up? There's really not much to say about um, evil hag. I mean, she's she's gonna play the the total role of the the classic evil hag. She's gonna have a spooky forest. Um, she's gonna it's gonna be full of evil fey. Um, and her domain, right, is going to represent the more natural, more wild, more dangerous, like, fey type situation. Um, I almost feel like maybe the reason the lichens gravitate towards the Frankenstein dude is because, um, their dreadlord, uh, was destroyed, so they're kind of like without uh, a master. Uh, maybe even the hag uh, destroyed their dreadlord. That kind of adds a bit of history to the world. Like things have happened before the campaign started. Uh, which is kind of cool. Alright. So the, la the last one that I had in mind. Because I only had four that I came up with. Um, could be a pentagram of factions, uh, two allies and two enemies. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like that. Uh, vampires, ghosts, uh, were animals, witches, and Frankenstein. Uh, maybe have her curse be that when she makes a deal, she cannot break their own word. Ooh, that's good. I mean, that's normal Fey stuff, but, uh, was banished to the dread realm, uh, for, uh, breaking her word. Too many times. Uh, the greatest crime a fey can commit. Uh, now she is bound by her word um, more than any other being alive. Alright. Yeah, that's hype. Alright. I'm thinking f I have four in mind, which does leave room for one more. Like, the fourth one that I want to have, uh, get ready for this, uh, is just uh, Justin, period. Um, and just bear with me here. And uh, this is a super paladin. Mmm. All right. Now, the reason... Uh, the reason that, I don't know if his name's gonna be Justin or not, but I just, I just got a picture, you know, like, you just got a picture of this blonde, blue-eyed, Prince Arthas looking motherfucker, right? Um, he is, he is the kind of lawful good that burns witches at the stake, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's the sort of lawful good. Lawful good 
to the uh, evil extreme. Uh, you know, burning witches and burning witches. Right? Uh, was banished uh, by the gods of light uh, for his overzealous campaign. Uh, none would accept him in death. Uh, neither heaven nor hell. Um, yeah. So, this guy, um, he's just that insane about his conquest of evil. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. He's, he's a Gaston, um, for sure. Like, he is the ultimate, ultimate dude, and he, um, yeah. Uh, a Warcraft example would be the, um, Scarlet, Scarlet Brotherhood, right? Where they, they, they started out as good guys, and then their obsession with hunting evil, uh, consumed them. Uh, yes, yes, for sure. So, that's, I kind of like this one because it really throws things for a loop. And also, aesthetically, as his dominion and his domain spreads, like, it seems like a good thing, right? Because it's light and it's beautiful and it's what people uh, expect. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, I'm really, really, really liking that aspect of uh, this is another type of evil. This is the type of evil that, uh, in a way, is the most dangerous kind of evil. Because this is the evil that brings complacency with it. Um, I should probably write that down. Um, his brand of evil uh, is dangerous because it breeds complacency wow I mean I was close maybe I had some of the same letters all right uh yeah exactly the kind of evil I mean it's the kind of evil that we're fighting well maybe not it's the kind of evil that some people are fighting every day IRL right it is that sort of complacency like as long as I'm not being burned at the stake as long as he's only going after the monsters um, it's not a problem uh, until, you know, until you, you are a monster. Um, so his minions, uh, I guess we could make this a little bit bigger so it stops flying back and forth. There we go. Uh, his brand of evil is dangerous. Okay, and then his minions are going to be, uh, inquisitors, uh, paladins, um, clerics, uh, monster hunters, We'll put racists. There we go. Um, yeah. So, that's the four that I kind of have worked out here. I see that um, Lycan Lord uh, used to be Fey Lord. Hag uh, usurped and gained power over Fey. Now Lycan left to Franken Lord. Yeah, I like the idea that um, they used to. There used to be this other Lord, and he was taken. In a way, we could play on that, right? So, pentagram of power. Um, we could say that there were five factions. Uh, Lycan Lord uh, was defeated. Uh, power vacuum. Uh, let's see. Remaining lords. Uh, now see the benefit of removing competition. Because uh, the idea here is in the campaign uh, the players so here we go. Campaign. Uh, so in the campaign there's going to be mm, uh, let's see. PCs uh, must navigate the warring factions of the Dreadlords. Um, who do they work for? Uh, who do they work against? 
Um, do they want to find a way out? Uh, do they want to claim uh, the domain for themselves? Right? Um, by move in, I mean enter the realms of dread from the outside. Uh, maybe the hag wasn't even a dreadlord banished here. She just heard about it and wanted to move in and replace the lycanthrope. Ooh. I like that. Um, that does leave us clear. Um, that does leave us clear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go up to that. Um, okay. Came here by choice to take power. Um, killed and replaced the Lycan Lord. Um, most Lycans defected uh, in rebellion taken in by construct. All right. So yeah, that does leave us, um, that's good. That leaves us the last one if we wanted to do five factions. Five is a pretty good number. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what to do with the last one. Um, I had considered like, I don't know, because it's Dungeons and Dragons. I had considered like a dragon for the for the for a dreadlord. That was kind of my what if list. Um, would be kind of cool. So like, I don't know. I don't know what to do with the dragon without bringing in like too much like fantasy and taking us away from the gothic horror. So I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. Yeah, a Dracolich would be kind of hype, or a Ghost Dragon would be kind of cool. Uh, but basically, like, a dragon who, um... Uh, an ooze is cool, um, but I feel like that's that's cribbing hard from, like, WoW Shadowlands, you know what I mean? Um, like, I really thought that was one of the cooler features of the Shadowlands, was the, the setting. Like, they had so much cool shit, um, with the Fae after, uh you know, afterlife, and then the undead afterlife, which sounds weird to say out loud. Um, yeah. Uh, Medusa would be kind of cool, but I feel like I'd be, I'd be doing, I've been doing Medusas a lot with Odyssey. Uh, I might want to move away from that. Think of the dragon Leviathan that has a horror character. Yeah. Um, hmm. So, so yeah, I... I don't know. I, I'm very strongly attached to all four of these Dreadlords. I think these are all very strong, and I think they're good They're good concepts. Um, and I could definitely start building the world out from there, um, because essentially each of these will represent a region of the Demiplane. Um, so I've got to figure out what to do... If I do a fifth faction, what to do about the fifth faction? Um, Cosmic Horror, uh, Abolith, Abolich, mm, mm. Spider Dragon would be kind of dope. Spider in general might be just kind of dope. Ghost is strong. All right, so hold on. Uh, we'll do fifth faction. All right, so contenders for fifth faction would be Spider. Spiders are great. Um, let's see. Drider could be dope. Uh, Mummy is uh, already a thing in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, but, you know, it's still pretty cool. Still pretty cool. Um, I think the Mummy is one of the more um, badass Dreadlords that already exists. Mm. A dragon-based one would be kind of hype. A... A spider, a mummy, dragon, uh, a ghost. The other thing is, is I don't want to bloat the amount of playable races. I want to keep the scope of this very, very small. And I worry that if I bring in another um, faction, yeah, like humans obviously are going to serve everybody. Um, but that's just another faction that has to be like fleshed out for the world. So, hmm... 
Spider, Mummy, Dragon, Ghost. Uh, Insect Lord is kind of in the same uh, same thing as... Uh, giant, maybe. Oh, that's the other thing. It's it's supposed to be... The scope of this is supposed to be very, very small. Um, so, I don't... Plus, when you're laying out the world, right? When you're laying out the world. Uh, let's see. Is this... Uh, Hmm. What do we got going on here? Nope. Hmm. Okay. I got an idea. Okay. So if we look at if we look at a regional map, right? So if we go in here and incarnate and we go to make a map and we do God, the watercolors are so ugly. Um I'm sorry, Incarnate. I just I really don't like him. Uh, let's see. Fantasy World. Parchment World. Mm, Parchment World's pretty spoopy. Uh, Alright, here we go. We'll go and do a Parchment World. Here we go. Lovely. Alright. Ooh, I think I'm getting called to dinner. Uh, hold on. We'll do Ultra, and then we'll do this big one and create... Oh, dinner's getting cold. Okay. So, I'm going to I'm going to start this map if it'll boot up. I Oh, I have to tell it how dangerous uh maps are. Yeah, I understand maps are dangerous incarnate. Please make me my dangerous map. All right. The reason that 4 is good, right? Instead of 5, that 4 is good is we could seriously just um take the world and you just divide it into the different sections, right? So you would have like, uh, what are you doing to me? All right. We could just divide the world up into four sections. You got a small world. You got four factions. The factions are all fighting with each other. Yeah. So, they'd have their seat of power, seat of power, seat of power, and seat of power. And then, of course, these lands in the middle. Uh, here we go. Uh, these lands in the middle are the ones that are in conflict, right? Like, these are the ones that are contested uh, contested realms. And so you get, like, this, you know, nice melting pot in the center uh, where the four different factions are competing for control, and this is where all the major conflict happens. Yeah. Oh, all right. So, yeah. Um, I think for now, unless an amazing idea uh, hits me, I'm going to build out with what we have right now. Because I feel like it's a good amount of races divided amongst four different factions. Uh, there's some good lore already in place. All four factions have distinct flavor and cultural theme to them. So I'm going to start building out from this. And if, if it feels like something's missing, that's where that fifth faction can kind of come from. But uh, anyways, we'll continue this next Tuesday um, and just kind of go, kind of go from there. So, uh... I appreciate everybody that hung out and contributed cool ideas uh, and excitement and all that good stuff. Uh, I am very excited about this project, and I look forward to taking this thing all the way to completion and running it in September. So, uh, all right. I don't know if I'm going to be able to stream tomorrow night. Um, I have to work late uh, for a streaming event for work, so... I might just be on tomorrow night to play Hellebore in Rime of the Frostmaiden. So, uh, Thursday, though, we'll be streaming. It'll be prep for Skull and Shackles. And Friday, I'll probably work on maps, I'm thinking, because I am jonesing to make some more maps in Incarnate, because I am enjoying that. So, all right, everybody have a great evening, and I'll see you next time.